Hey guys, Jay Cini here, and today we're gonna to talk about the pros and the cons of the Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps it out and gets this to a lot more people. So let's get straight into it and let's start to talk about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. So I've used this camera for a good six months now. So I have a lot of experience with it and I have a deep understanding of how it works. So there's some things about this camera which are incredible. And there's some things about this camera which are not so great, which I think could be improved. So I think it's important to discuss both of those things. So we'll start with the pros. Now I think the best thing that this camera has to offer is the image quality. It is truly incredible. It's a great, great image quality. And of course it shoots in RAW, uh, which means you have a lot more flexibility in post-production. And for a camera that's worth like $2,000, like that is incredible to have. So image quality is a massive plus for this camera. Um, so the one thing I wish it would improve just a little bit is probably the dynamic range. Um, I find that the, the GH5 and the GH5S have a slightly better dynamic range, but what you don't get in dynamic range, you get up for in the quality of the RAW. So the other thing which I think is really great about this camera is the size of the screen. Now, especially when you're outside shooting, uh, sometimes, especially with the sun, it can be really hard to see what you're uh, needing to see, especially when you're shooting on a camera uh, with a small screen. But of course, the Blackmagic solves this problem. It has a massive five inch screen, uh, which is great. You know, it makes it really easy to see what's in focus. Um, it has a lot of settings in there to do with the focus peaking. It's really easy to see. So I think that is a massive plus for this camera. Of course, the, the other thing which I think is great about this camera is of course the different raw rates that you can use. So you can shoot three to one, five to one, eight to one, and 12 to one, which is great. Uh, if you have something that uh, you don't need maximum raw quality for, then it's really easy just to bump that down. But if you need something that is cinema quality, then of course you can bump it up. However, that leads me to the first con of this camera. Now, because it's shooting in RAW, the files are absolutely massive. So that's something that you need to take into account. Uh, you will need to budget for additional storage because you will start to blaze through it. Trust me, I know. Uh, the other thing that's a real problem with this camera is that if you're using SD cards, here's the SD slot, they fill up incredibly quickly. Um, I think on, on the highest setting, you're probably getting about 10, 15 minutes of like a 128 gig card, which seems crazy to someone that's just shot on uh, regular DSLRs compared to this. So I've actually had to go and get additional storage on top of this to find a new solution because changing a card every 15 minutes is not feasible and it gets quite expensive. So I've managed to get one of these Samsung uh, T5s and this is a one terabyte drive a solid state which sits on top of the camera and collects all of the information from there out of the USB port. The other option that you do have is CFast cards, but I think that's a terrible option because they're prohibitively expensive. Uh, and SD cards are just not going to fly unless you're shooting uh, a much smaller raw uh, codec or you're shooting in, uh, in ProRes or something like that. So you will need to also budget for additional storage. Another thing which I really love about this is the quality of the slow motion. At 60 frames a second, it looks fantastic. It's really smooth and it's exactly what you'd expect, expect from slow motion in a camera. Now, having said that, the, the camera says that it can do 120 frames a second, which is correct. It does 120 frames, but the crop in on the sensor is basically unusable it brings the subject so much closer to you and it's just, it's too cropped. So I find that the 120 frames a second, I used to use a lot on the GH5 and the GH5S. I don't use it barely at all <clears throat> when it comes to the Black Magic. I tend to stick at 60 because uh, it seems to be a much better option. One of the other massive cons that you have to take into account with this camera is the battery life. Now, there's no easy way of saying it except that it is terrible. Uh, but that's just the way it is. When you're recording massively high um, amounts of data, then it's gonna chew through battery. And this one sure does. So it's very much a double-edged sword. So I'd suggest if you are 
are gonna be shooting with the Blackmagic camera, you need to be stocked up with a lot of batteries or look at another solution like creating a cage and having like a V-mount battery, which is gonna last a lot longer. I tend to just run a lot of batteries and change them pretty quick because I'm not doing long takes, I'm doing short takes, so it's fine for me. Um, so that's one thing that I think you really have to take into account when you're getting this camera is the battery life. One other thing that is quite difficult about this camera is it's sized quite differently to a lot of other cameras that you would traditionally put on a small gimbal. Now you can make this work on a Ronin and I often do. However, it is quite difficult. You will get a little bit of shake uh, because the camera is so wide compared to many traditional uh, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. So you're gonna get a little bit of shake um, on that part but I think it's a small price to pay for the image quality you get. And of course, any shake you can fix in post with the warp stabilizer. So I know I've said quite a lot of cons. I've got one more. Um, I think audio is a little bit of an afterthought in this camera. I don't think they really uh, put too much thought into that because they really focus on the image quality. And that's what makes it perfect for music video production because generally the song is already created. Uh, so you don't have to worry about audio too much. You just need enough to sync it up. So having said that with all the cons, this is actually an incredible camera, especially for the price that you are getting it for. Like this is a $2,000 camera and the capabilities that you're getting for that price is pretty much the same as what you'd be paying for like a $20,000 camera minus a few things. So the fact that Blackmagic has managed to cram this into a $2,000 camera is really remarkable. So uh, I, I would recommend it. I've swapped from uh, the GH5 and the GH5S to the Blackmagic because I just find that the image quality and the colors are just superior because of that raw factor. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K cinema camera and I hope it, it helps you whether you're deciding to get it or you're just interested in the camera. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you later.